Casual Birder Podcast, a weekly podcast for people interested in the birds they find around them. I'm Susie Buttress. As a casual birder, I look for opportunities to watch birds as I go about my daily tasks. Join me each week as I talk about the birds I've seen or hear from others about their experiences. This week, I speak with Mort Putnam about the birds we saw on a walk I led at Lake Arrowhead in California back in June. And I share some of the bird songs and calls that I recorded there. As autumn progresses here in the UK and the nights start drawing in, I've been thinking back to the wonderful couple of weeks I spent in sunny California and New York in June. I've mentioned before that I'm a big fan of the podcasts on the Maximum Fun Network and I've long wished to attend the podcast convention known as Max FunCon. This year, not only was I lucky enough to attend, but I also had the opportunity to lead two bird walks while there, assisted by Maximum Fun producer and birder Kevin Ferguson. I met Mort Putnam during that weekend. He came on the morning bird walk and agreed later to speak with me about his experiences. After my interview with Mort, you can hear some of the bird recordings I made while at Lake Arrowhead. Hi Mort, thank you so much for joining me on the Casual Birder podcast. Thanks for having me. We met at Lake Arrowhead, where we were both attending Max FunCon, which is a a kind of an adult summer camp for people who are fans of of podcasts, and in particular of the Maximum Fun podcasts. And on that uh, weekend, I was honoured to be able to lead some bird walks along with one of the producers at Max Fun, Kevin Ferguson. And, uh, And you came along on one of the bird walks with us. So had you ever been on a bird walk before? Not really formally. Um, Where I live, there's quite a big, like a park very close to my house. So I would do some bird watching when I was was younger and I always enjoy uh, watching them. We have a lot of hawks in the area. So that's what I would always try to go find. Right. And sorry, I, I should have said, I think you said you live in Houston? Yeah, Houston, Texas. Is that where you grew up as well? Yep. I have lived in the same neighborhood all 21 years of my life. Oh, wow. (laughs) Um, I don't really know Houston very well. And I kind of think of it, I know that's a city, but I kind of think of the surroundings as being quite deserty. Is that accurate or am I totally off there? Uh, Houston is actually much more swampy than most people realize. We have a lot of bayous. We have um, a small lake. Uh, It's always humid all the time. It's definitely not deserty. Right, right. Okay, so I'm learning something here. So the hawks that you, you've seen around, what kind of hawks are they? Uh, mostly Cooper's hawks. So they're a sort of mid-sized hawk, aren't they? And do you tend to see them sort of chasing after prey? Um, yeah, so actually a few years back, uh, we found one in our neighbor's backyard who had just taken out like a pretty large rat and he was just sitting in the backyard, like eating it, just wow. kind of looking at us like, can I enjoy my meal, please? <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Oh, so they, they eat rodents as well as what, other birds? Yeah, I've seen them attack. Like, There's a lot of mockingbirds around, too. They definitely get fed up with the mockingbirds and like go after them. Right. Uh, do you have like an outside space where you live, like a garden or something that you can watch regularly? Uh, we have, um, I guess, like a mid-sized backyard, um, but there's a lot, a lot of trees in our neighborhood, so we get a lot of birds nesting. Like, There's usually uh, like a blue jay nest in my neighbor to the left and neighbor to the right had actually had hawks nesting in it last year. Um, so we have a lot of area for birds to be in, which is nice. Right. Yeah. No, I was going to ask you what, what kind of birds you see on a regular basis. And definitely a lot of mockingbirds, a lot of doves, um, grackles. There are so many grackles in Houston. It's ridiculous. I don't know if, if this is something regional, but we have what we call bird meetings, which in intersections, like during the evening, there will just be hundreds of birds in like every single tree lining the telephone wires and just screaming at each other. And it's slightly terrifying. Is it a particular species that does that? I think it's mostly like the grackles and the crows that do that. They're definitely the loudest, at least. But it's interesting that it's happening on all the power lines. So 
they're very visible then, aren't they, if they're out sort of silhouetted against the sky. And it's always four-way intersections too, always. Oh, really? Yeah, I've always noticed that. I've always thought, do they just know to do this or is it just because that's where the most power lines are? But it's always four-way intersections. Oh, how interesting. So you what, avoid going out at that time just in case? So, sometimes I will because it is honestly a little bit creepy. Yeah, I think it's the, the whole gathering of um, a large number in one area that can feel a little bit, if not threatening, a little bit off just because there's so many of them all gathered. Oh, yeah, definitely. I understand what you're saying about it being a bit creepy though and definitely has overtones of the birds from uh, from the film i know i have photos i can send them to you oh that would be lovely yes we we could put them in the um the casual bird of facebook group uh which is where i always encourage people to um to post their own pictures of, of birds that they've seen um because it's really nice to have that conversation with other other people that are interested in the birds So uh, if we can go back to the bird walk that you did up at uh, Lake Arrowhead, were there any birds that you saw on the bird walk that you hadn't seen before? I had never seen the Stellar's Jay before. I think that might have also been my favorite one Um, because it it looks like a little punk wearing a jean jacket. It's so cute. (laughs) It does. I was like, I have friends that look like that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and especially if they put their crest up. Yeah. So do you have, you said you have blue jays in your, in your gardens or in your neighbor's gardens? Oh uh, yeah. They're the, they're the ones that are like completely blue and then they kind of have like the black stripe. That's right around the neck, sort of necklace. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, the Stella's jays are kind of like the, the West Coast version of blue jays. As you know, they have this um, smoky black neck and head feathers and yet they still have those stunning blue f- feathers on the back and wings so they still have that gorgeous, sort of iridescent blue almost. I mean, if you get it in the right light, it's a really, really beautiful colour blue. On that walk as well, we saw, um, I remember seeing the black-headed grosbeak, which um, we saw towards the end of the walk. Did you manage to Was see that? Was that the, the one with like the yellow and the orange chest? That's right. And it came down and landed on the ground. And so I managed to get a little bit of video of that as well, which I'll post that was a brand new bird for me. Um, they have a very unusual chunky beak, uh, which hence the name gross beak. It's a, a sort of very large beak for the size of head. And um, yeah, I was really stunned again because it's such a colourful bird. And in the UK, we don't tend to have, we, we, we have colourful birds, but not as stunningly colourful as, as some of the birds that um, you have out there. Um, so that was quite exciting. I was just trying to remember the other birds that we saw. We saw the woodpeckers, didn't we? We saw the acorn woodpeckers. I think we saw the acorn woodpeckers and we saw one of another species of woodpecker, but I can't remember which cat. Right, so we had a nuttles woodpecker. That was the other one. Um, Right, so let me go through. So I've I've got from that session that we had nuttles woodpecker, acorn woodpecker, American robin, the Stella's jay, which you mentioned, a spotted towie, Oh, I keep saying this wrong. A spotted toey. Now, I don't know whether you saw that. I was looking at it, but I did not see it. Because they're quite surprising birds. They're really highly coloured. Um, they've got black head and necks, I believe, and then like an orange breast and black and white spotted wings. But because of that spotted wings, they, they blend really well into any dappled shade. And so even though they've got this really bright orange colour on them, it's actually quite hard to see them. Uh, it's just really surprising. Um, yeah. I remember people kept like pointing at it and I was like, I don't see it. It's like, it's right there. I'm like, <laughs> what? I know that that is really frustrating. Um, I heard and saw a, a red breasted nuthatch, but I don't, I think it was quite quick. I know I'd pointed it out to people and mentioned that it made that noise of kind of, huh? It was like a very nasal little noise. And we heard it first and I pointed it out and then I saw it. But I think it was just around very, very briefly. So I don't know if everyone saw that. Um, As we were walking back, there was the Brewer's Blackbirds, which were around um, all around the conference centre. They were those um, shiny uh, blackbirds with very pale eyes. I think they had sort of orangey eyes. And, uh, and then there, the black-headed uh, grosbeak. And we also heard a scrub jay, and Kevin um, said that we'd also heard a cooper's hawk. We heard a hawk calling, and he said it was a cooper's hawk. 
Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was a wonderful walk. Like, regardless of the birds, the campus was so beautiful. It really it was. It was so nice to just walk it. Is there anything that you feel that you got out of the walk that um, would mean that you would want to do something like that again? It was definitely, I mean, besides it just being a really, like, wonderful, like, peaceful way to start a day. Mm-hmm. Um I'm not usually the kind of person who would just like go out for a walk because I felt like it. But I think because I would now have like, oh, I'm going to go out for a walk because I want to go birding. It's a much better motivation than just like, oh, I should just go for a walk. Oh, right. That's interesting. Yeah, I did have a couple of people say that actually they were very keen hikers. But for some reason, it had never occurred to them to look for birds while they went hiking. So they were very often in the woods, but they wouldn't even notice the birds. And um, and having been on the bird walk, they were saying, oh, we're definitely going to look for birds as well now, because it's like an added dimension to, to being out for a walk. I, I do feel I've led you quite a lot in saying quite positive things about the bird walk. So are there any things about the bird walk perhaps not so positive, or are there any um, things you would like change Hmm. Uh, well, personally, I honestly don't have really anything negative to say because I just enjoyed myself immensely. I think maybe some other people would think the group was too big and it would be better to have like more almost like one on one time with the guides. Yeah, I think that would probably be like the biggest thing Yeah, is more access to the guides. And if the group was bigger than like the 15 people, I think that would be too many. Yeah, that would be it would definitely be too many. I think maybe the perfect size would be like 10 people. Yeah. So we did actually say 12 people because I thought we could probably handle six people each. Um, and then because it was oversubscribed, there was a few people that said, can we come along? And it was like, I'll go on then. Thank you so much for your time, Mort. It's um, It's been lovely speaking with you. It was really good to chat with you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. I enjoyed catching up with Mort. He also mentioned that he's worked in the past with birds at a rehab centre and I hope to hear some of his stories in a future episode. If you want to follow Mort, you can find him on Twitter or Instagram at Necromorter. I'll put all the links in the show notes. I must make a correction to a bird description that I made in that interview. I said that the spotted toey had an orange breast. I was going from memory And just remember the vibrant rusty orange colour along with the black head and white spots on black wings. When I checked in a bird guide afterwards, I saw that in fact it has a white breast and the rusty orange colour is found along the sides and flank of the bird. So I was almost right and I would recognise a spotted toey from memory if I saw one again. But I didn't want to mislead you with an incorrect description. I wasn't able to make any recordings while we conducted the bird walks. However, on the first afternoon at Lake Arrowhead, I went for a walk in the grounds of the convention centre to see what birds might be around. Here are some of the recordings I made as I walked around during that hot, sunny afternoon in June and from dawn the following morning. So here I am at Lake Arrowhead. I've just taken a short walk down to the lake um, to see what birds I might see there. But actually I think I'm more interested in the birds that I'll see in the shrubs and the trees. So I'm out at the Zen deck, I think, and there's a couple of acorn woodpeckers here. Um, One of them had food in its beak, so it's possible that there's a nest nearby. And um, there's also a plastic owl here, (laughs) which freaked me out when I first saw it. Doesn't seem to be putting off the birds anyway. I just saw a Stella's jay and some mountain chickadees and a northern flicker as well. I think there might be a woodpecker nearby. I'm just going to get out of the sun. right next to me. Um, There you go. I think it's a hairy woodpecker. (laughs) 
<laughs> There's a pair of acorn, acorn woodpeckers here. That's what you can hear now. And they're actually drumming on one of the pylons here. That's quite remarkable. Okay, so we'll carry on. See what else we might see. I think there's another woodpecker here. So that was a woodpecker that I've obviously worried. That's a beautiful bird. I don't know what that is. I can't recognise all the birds I heard, so if anyone recognises any of the calls or songs, please do let me know. I love hearing your bird stories and sightings. This week, my colleague Chris Kay emailed me to say... I dug over my vegetable patch yesterday and when taking a break got to sit back and watch a jay, blackbirds, robin, woodpecker, blue tits, coal tits and a seagull descend in the space of about 25 minutes. You came to mind as I sat telling my son what the different birds were so we had you on in the garden whilst we finished up. He also wrote, Our local woodpecker seems to spend a lot of its time in my log pile insects area in the garden and going round the edges of the trampoline covers, when not sitting in the dead bough on the neighbour's apple tree. I asked Chris whether this was a great spotted or a green woodpecker, and he wrote back, Oh, very much a green woodpecker. It's been a source of amusement out in the garden this summer. Thank you so much for listening, Chris, and I hope you and your son will send me more sightings over the coming winter season. Long-time listener Billy B wrote, Hi Susie. I've just listened to the latest episode of your podcast in which you spoke to the Edinburgh Birdwatcher and I enjoyed it very much. When both you and Ewan mentioned a bee going into your nest boxes, it reminded me of an incident that happened to me about 15 years ago. My brother-in-law Gordon and I both put up nest boxes that we'd made in our back gardens, attaching them to the exterior walls of our houses. Within a short period, he had blue tits flying back and forth to his box with nesting materials but I'd seen nothing near mine. A number of weeks later, the birds that took up home in his box had chicks, and we both heard them cheeping, yet mine remained unused. Towards the end of the breeding season, I decided that I would enlarge the hole in the nest box ready for the following year, after convincing myself that the problem lay in the fact that I'd made the hole too small. Anyway, I got out my drill and climbed up to the box, positioned the drill over the hole with the cutting bit attached, And as soon as I pressed the trigger to start up the drill, a swarm of wasps came flying out at me. I'd never heard of wasps colonising bird boxes before, so to say I got a fright would be a complete understatement. I've never shot down a ladder so quickly in my life and I was through the back door before my drill hit the ground. Billy goes on to say, As I've mentioned before, in 2008 I lost my sight, but I still enjoy listening to the birds whenever I'm out and about or in my garden. The wasp incident happened at my old address, and I now live in a bungalow which has a back and front garden, but unfortunately both were paved over when we moved in. Whereas in our old garden we had plants, shrubs and feeders to attract birds, here it isn't so easy, as apart from pots, tubs and container plants, our garden is barren in comparison. However, we do put out food, 
and I've heard blue tits and great tits, robins, blackbirds, song thrush, magpies, crows and a pied wagtail with its unmistakable call. My wife has also seen bullfinches regularly, which are probably attracted by our fruit trees and bushes, which we also have in large tubs. Thank you so much for writing in, Billy, and sharing that story about the wasps. I'm glad you weren't hurt. Hopefully you had birds using the box in the next season. I'd love to know what birds you've seen this week. Join our Facebook group to discuss this week's episode or post your photos of the birds you've seen. I really do enjoy hearing your tales, so come and join the conversation there. Find us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash casual birder podcast. Follow me on Twitter at casual birder pod or on Instagram at casual birder podcast. And you can email me at casual pod at gmail.com. Make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing to the show. Subscribing is free and you can do it wherever you listen to the show. And if you enjoy listening, please consider sharing tweets and posts about the show to help other people find it. Thank you to Randy Braun for designing the artwork for the show. The theme music is Short Sleeve Shirt by The Drones. Thanks to them for letting me use it. And check out their website at www.dronesmusic.net. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the Casual Birder podcast. Podcast.